predictable income. And I'm going to go top to bottom, 30,000 foot view of what this looks like. So I'm going to try not to leave anything out. And I'm also going to try to leave enough time for questions because I guarantee you, um, at least I hope, oh, what a disappointment if you don't. But I'm going to leave this time for questions. Uh, I am Christina Romero. You can tweet me at caremediadesigns.com. Um, and I'm at, uh, that's my email. Yeah, if you want to email me with a question, that's cool. Um, and that's my website, krmd.co. And as we start getting into uh, website and care plans, I want to talk a little bit about why this, I'm so passionate about this. This is a picture when my husband and I went to Hawaii in December of 2013. The month before, I had just put four of my clients on monthly care plans. And sitting in that chair right there, with that strawberry daiquiri, I saw four payments come in for my monthly care plans. And I thought, this is the life. <laughs> so you too can have that picture. Uh, so without predictable income, it's really hard to take a vacation. It's really hard to know I could pay two grand to go to Hawaii to get a nice vacation with my spouse. Um, and not, you know, think what's going to happen next month. That's what I have right there. Predictable income. Not passive, predictable, because we're going to talk about the little bit of work you got to do. So how many here are updating websites for clients? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, that's great. Now keep your hand up if you are updating websites for clients and all of them are paying you. Okay, that's not as many as who originally went up. If you're updating clients for free, you're leaving money on the table and you're making poor George Washington very upset. Yes. I've got a, I've got a, a surprise for you though. If you're updating your client sites for less than $50, you're leaving money on the table. So last night I was getting ready for this talk and I thought, well, you know, I remember you know, a year ago or so, there were some basic, basic website care plans for these big companies. They're on $29, $39 a month for basic website care. Update plugins, update WordPress, security monitoring, basic stuff. Last night I could not find those plans. I was like, oh, I could not find those plans. Nothing less than $50. So if you, if, if, you might walk out of here charging more if you're already uh, in, in, you can charge way more than that, we'll get to that. All right, so the what and the why of actually why we're doing this. What are we doing? We're protecting sites, protecting WordPress websites from hacks by keeping plugins and WordPress updated. Simple solution to keep protecting from a hack website, it's keeping everything up to date. We're preventing uh, broken plugins by updating websites. We're preventing when things uh, break the site, so because we're monitoring it, right? We're preventing the client from having lost functionality, lost revenue, downtime, all of those things. That's, that's what we're doing when we're providing website care. Why we're providing website care is because WordPress is the most popular CMS solution, and in fact, it's powering over, what, 30% of the internet. So it's very, very popular. Because of its popularity, and because of its open source structure, it's a target. It's great because it's really easy for our clients to update. It's really easy for us to make for our clients cost-effective solutions. But it is a target because of those two things. So you need to uh, figure out that that is why this is important. Your clients need someone on the site, protecting it, maintaining it, keeping eyes on the site, and helping it grow so they don't lose revenue. All right, I'm going to try to break down, I think, what three major things that we're going to do in this talk. The first is using WordPress to actually set up selling these care plans. The first thing you need is a sales page. You need to sell care plans. This is my sales page. And on it, I talk a lot about that what and why, the benefits of why this is important. We offer more than website maintenance. We supply the tools for knowledge uh, and, and for growth, right? I'm helping them grow their websites. So it's more than just updating. Benefit, benefit, benefit. And I get into kind of the things that we offer and, you know, why it's important. And, and we even have some blog posts on the side that help sell this, of, of why you need your website cared for and all of those great things. So you need that sales page. Then you need to install WooCommerce. We have Woo here today. WooCommerce, a free plugin for e-commerce that you can just install, set up that checkout page, uh, set, out, set up that cart page. So then you can then install WooCommerce subscriptions. WooCommerce subscriptions.
subscriptions is a plugin that will allow you to create a subscription product, have the client sign up uh, by purchasing that product, and they get charged every month without you doing anything, without you sending an invoice, because it's no fun to then try and send that invoice to clients every single month to keep their website maintained. There's something about a recurring subscription model that's been ingrained into our society. Who here has a Netflix account? Do you even think about your Netflix account being charged to your credit card every month? No, you're just happy it's there when you go to watch Netflix. And that's kind of what it is with recurring subscriptions. You want it to happen automatically so your client doesn't even think about it. Then you want to link that to a payment uh, processor like Stripe that accepts recurring subscriptions. Uh, Stripe and I think PayPal uh, Payments Pro. But I really like Stripe. I'm able to actually go in there and charge my client additionally. I can adjust charges. Uh, if they, they can update their credit card through my site with WooCommerce subscriptions. But for any reason, some of my non-tech clients cannot seem to do that. They can call me and then we can do it on Stripe and I can update their credit card. It's a fantastic, easy uh, uh, model to link to subscriptions. And it's similar payment uh, percentages that PayPal has. So really easy. All that's, those are the main things that you need to set it up on your website. Next, you need to create those three subscription products. And here's mine. I've got uh, maintain as the lowest plan, manage as the middle plan, and my master. And my goal is the middle right there. I really want them to sign up. Now, I'm actually raising these prices. And I, I haven't gotten around to raising them, but now I'm raising them because no one balks at these prices. No one. None of the clients that I qualify and come to me, no one's saying that's too high. Um, so I'm at the point now where I'm thinking, when that starts to happen, these prices need to go up. I'm clearly offering enough value where they find me valuable that, that this isn't uh, too much for them to come. So then you create those three subscription products and you link those to your sales page. So this is kind of what it looks like lovely little pricing grid about everything that's included. And what I got there is some basic support, software updates, uptime and security monitoring. I'm going to get into this a little bit later. Uh, so performance optimization, that's a key because if it's not performing well, it needs more support time for me. So I always want to make sure it's performing well. And then we provide a detailed monthly report on what we do, site backups, and I like to include some support time, so 30 minutes, 60 minutes, or 120 minutes. We've got some other things, like I run some quarterly webinars, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, about how to value pack these care plans. So, uh, I said link them to your subscription products, but mine aren't linked, as you see. Um, so that is because I started getting people just buying them, and I didn't know who these people were. So, um, I like to now kind of onboard my clients, I just send them the link to the product on WooCommerce, the WooCommerce sales page. Um, but right there at contact us, please don't just go ahead and buy these without speaking with me because that's kind of a problem. So once that happened, I kind of unlinked them, but, uh, but you can link them there to make it easy for your clients. All right, topic number two. Who here has current clients that they could get on monthly maintenance weekly? Yep, yep, we got them. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about transitioning those current clients onto care plans, my favorite topic. <laughs> Seems quite simple, you email your past clients. You now state there's a shift in your company. So find a reason for there being a shift in your company. I just got back from WordCamp, and Christina Romero told me that's your reason. Uh, you say, I'm now providing ongoing website care. Here's why this is important. Make a blog post, put the blog post on your site, because no one reads a long email. Put in that blog post all the reasons of how WordPress has been hacked in the last couple months, uh, how downtime can cost you money, how constantly plugins and WordPress is being updated, and if this is done blindly, something could break, whatever. Not too doom and gloom, but things like that. But also how you will now be on their site to help them grow their website. That's the coolest thing about these care plans. You actually look at your client's site every month where you probably wouldn't be looking at their site, and you start to think, wow, they're not really mobile, they're not really mobile optimized. We should probably fix that. Mm, this is kind of moving kind of slow since we updated that plugin. That's gonna cost them money. Or, uh, you know what, I just learned something about lead capture. If 
they use lead capture, they could get more customers. So your eyes are on the site. So you make that case to them in the email, and you email your past clients. Some reason for some shift, now the things that you're offering. Then you're going to track that email for opens and for clicks. The easiest way to do that is like MailChimp. So you can put all your clients in a list, have it say, hi, Bob, you know, so it's nice and personal with, with using the, the merge tags, the MailChimp. And then you have your little email there. So then you're going to go back into MailChimp, you're going to open up that, and you're going to see exactly who opened that email and exactly who clicked on the link to your blog post. Now you know which clients are legitimately interested in wanting to know more about website care. After that, follow up with those clients. So the clients are eventually going to come back to you over time and say, oh, this plugin broke, and, or I got this notice in my WordPress app. And that's when you go, hey, remember that email I sent you about website care? Like, that's a thing. That's what I'm doing now. So you need to sign up for a plan. But for the ones that immediately click that blog post, follow up with them, reach back out to them, and schedule a phone call. And usually within a 15-minute phone call, you can get them on a, a care plan because they've already exhibited some kind of interest. But this was something that they actually wanted to go out and read, and they're a good uh, lead to jump on those care plans right away. But eventually, most of them come back anyway, and you've already emailed, and you can say, yeah, that's what that means. That's what that care plan means. Okay. Now, the actual website care. So here we have set up our plans on our website. We have a great page. We can take payments, and we've emailed our clients. Now, how do we actually do the darn thing? Uh, and that's the key here. We don't really want to offer a product that we don't do well. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the ways you can do this well and made it quite easy. Manage WP. There's lots of different ways to do this. There's lots of different plugins you can put in WordPress to automatically update plugins. There's um, all these other different services that can easily update plugins. The reason I like Manage WP is because recently they rolled out Orion, which is a new revamp. And they have basically everything I want to do on the client side in this panel, including beautiful client reports that can be sent uh, with customized emails. It's just really well done. And so I have all my client sites in here, and I can easily update them. And by saying me easily update them, my team can easily update them. And here are some of the main things that you want to do when, when performing website care. You want to provide backups. And yes, your hosting may have backups for your client. But my client always thought when I said backups, he thought WP Engine kept the backups after 30 days. It doesn't keep the backups after 30 days. So if you're keeping backups for your clients and it goes longer than 30 days, you're a step ahead of your hosting. Uh, so offering backups, because we all really want kind of a three-pronged backup system anyway. So it's great that you're hosting for your client is having their backups, but you also want to take backups, and you also want to couple those backups and put them on an external hard drive or a Dropbox or something like that. Then we update the plugins, and we update the themes, and we update WordPress. Now we go through a system of where we check the website before this happens, then we update, and then we check the website after this happens, because inevitably something will change. It won't happen all the time, but that's why they're paying us, because we want to catch what happens when the subscribe to plugin updates, and the, uh, you know, the whole thing just doesn't show up right on the sidebar. It needs to be restyled, so we open a support ticket. Uh, then you can monitor security and performance. So we want to make sure the site is clean. Uh, there has been times when a new site came to me, and our first time generating a report for her, the website was hacked in between the, when she came to us to go on website care. And like the two weeks later, when we were doing her first report, the website was hacked. We were transitioning her off of HostGator onto WP Engine, but we had yet to do that. And I was like, it was literally just hacked in two weeks. So uh, that happened before we sent the report. <laughs> like, okay, we need to fix that before we send her a report. Then performance, where you can see how the site is running, and it keeps a, a record of all that. So whatever tools you do, you, you need to have these tools, not necessarily in Manage WP, but in something. So you need to have um, an uptime monitor. And so uh, every day, I'll get notices for downtime or uptime for different client sites. And if I start to see a pattern that they're all on GoDaddy or they're all on WP Engine, it's not that big of a deal. If I get one and it was down for 30 minutes, then that's an issue and I'll reach out to the hosting and I'll inevitably find something like 
uh, their website is resource intensive, and we have to revisit that. You can also monitor SEO keywords and things like that here, um, and then all in all, a client report, which is fantastic. So uh, all those things are the basic maintenance that we do. And I reached out to W uh, Managed WP. I said, hey, Managed WP, I'm speaking. Can you give us a promo code? <laughs> they said, sure. So they're going to give us $20 off if you use Hello Boston. So uh, thank you. So you can give it a try and, and see if it uh, helps you do it really fast. The key is if we're selling plans and we're selling them for $50, $60, $70, $80 a month, $100, $200, $300 a month, you want to be able to update these very, very quickly. And sometimes honing up for a software that can help you do that within you know, a few minutes of your time, that's going to give you a return on the profit. So that's really important. Yes? Oh, at the end, unless it has to be on the slide. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll go to the past. <laughs> I'm still going. All right, so well, other things that make this work is a ticket desk. Uh, so the ticket desk is linked to a specific support email, support at. And if you do not offer plan, with, if you offer plans without a support at email address, you're going to be screwed. You want to make sure that when people are emailing about the support for their website, it's going to a dedicated ticket desk. Get it out of your inbox. Get it out of your email. It will be lost forever. And all these things that are really important that your client is paying you now to pay attention to will get lost. Plus, I have my team on the ticket desk, and I'm not really in there. So it's a great way for them to communicate. We all know what's going on. Then a task list manager. We want to take anything that has to be done for a ticket, a support ticket that comes in from our care plans, we want to put that in a task list manager. Uh, so if the ticket comes in, maybe we have to fix, we have to replace a plugin, let's say, and that becomes a task, and it goes into our teamwork, we use teamwork. Um, and, and when we do the task, it's marked complete, and the ticket shows it's marked complete, and we're, uh, we're all good, we email back that everything's fine. So teamwork and teamwork desk are what we use, because those two can kind of link up. So we really like Realized. But the two main categories are what you need there. And then email lists. And by email lists, I mean things that will tell you when there's bug fixes. So there's a, right there, WordPress Tower, their there new post, Jetpack 3.9.6 fixes bug. So I immediately create a task for my team, uh, for my dev, and I say, update Jetpack on all of our care sites, care plan sites. And it's updated like that. Uh, inevitably, if they're on a really great hosting, they'll get a notice that says, you know, Jetpack had the security release, you need your dev to do this, you know. And then we're emailing the client being like, hey, Jetpack X here, we've got it taken care of, we're fine. And they love it. I get so many emails back, thank you. Like it's, you know, big deal. They don't know how to do it. So to them, it is a big deal. WordPress Tavern, uh, WPMail.me is another one. So Curry Security, uh, The Whip by WPMU Dev, those are all ones I'm on. And then, um, what is the other one we learned about today, Troy? Post status. Post status. Post status. So those are all lists that you can go on. So you're notified of when there's problems out there with plugins and WordPress, and you need to update right away. What if my clients won't pay me? <laughs> OK, let's have a little moment, shall we? If your clients don't want to pay you for website care, you really need to reevaluate why they are your clients. If they're the right clients for you, ask yourself, have they been easy to work with? Do they respect your process? Do they hammer you day and night? And do they respect your value? I would say if you had to say no to any one of those questions, they shouldn't be your client. This is a really good indicator of who should be your clients. In fact, I don't work with anyone who's not on a care plan for this reason. Because I want clients who respect my process and who find value in what I do. So if they can't pay for a care plan, they're not going to be the right client for me. Bottom line. Consequences of an action, right here. No monthly plans equal desperation and emergencies. You will be desperate for project work if you don't have predictable income in your business. You will take anything that comes along because you don't know when the next thing is going to come along. If I told you you could walk out here today, email all your clients, and you'd have $1,500 or $2,000 a month in monthly care plan income, 
how much would that impact how you would jump on the next project? Probably give you a little bit of breathing room. Maybe not a lot, but just enough to where you didn't feel desperate to accept the work. And you say, hey, I got 24 grand coming in every, every year at least. That is very realistic. That price point, if you've been in WordPress for two to three years building websites, that price point of principal income is, is incredibly realistic. And then the emergencies. Your clients will still come to you. Uh, my husband sitting right down there came to work with me, and he, he knew at the time, I thought, when I'm done with websites, I send the clients away, and I never want to speak to them again. And he had said, that's probably not a good business model. Well, it's exactly right, because the clients, they're not done with you. They're never done with you. They will always come back. If they see that little red notice that something's wrong, if they don't pay their hosting and their website goes away, whatever it is, they remember the person who helped them build their website, and they come back to you. So avoid emergencies, because those are never fun emails to get. Built in the care plans into what you do. Put them on a care plan. You may never talk to them. I don't talk to many of them. Many of them are just on care plans. They know I'm taking care of the site. That's all they need to know. They don't make any requests. They are my favorite clients. <laughs> all right. So two things that make this thing work. For me, personally. Two things that make this work. Drawing a line in the sand. Uh, a lovely man right there named Troy Dean was the one who gave me this idea for care plans as he was desperately trying to give me good advice to fix my business in WP Elevation. And I realized that the best way for me to convert existing clients onto a plan was to draw a line in the sand. That I was only going to work with a client who was on a care plan. And anyone who did not subscribe to a care plan was just not going to be my client. I got a lot of sign-ups for care plans after that because I had built trust with my clients. I had proven my value to them. Sure, they could go out and find somebody to update their website every six months or every year or maybe find a cheaper service, but they knew me. They knew I delivered on what I promised, and they knew the value they were getting out of me. So they were more than willing to sign up because I said that that was my process. That is how I worked. Second thing that makes this work is value. You have to add value to your plans. And that value is really what makes you set the price point. Because just updating WordPress and plugins, clients don't really find, unless they're concerned about security, find a lot of value in that. So you can add things like webinars. You can run webinars for them. You could have a newsletter, a monthly newsletter that you send out to your clients. You can reach out into the silence and send them articles, advice. Um, you can do other services like social media or SEO and put it in the plan. Or just consulting and coaching calls that they can talk to you every month. I mean, by me putting in my plans that they could talk to me for one hour a month, people are really like conscious of that. And they're like, is it okay if I book a time with you? Like, are we okay to do that? Like, yeah, yeah, you're totally cool. And then they book their time to chat. And so they're not calling all the time or, you know, they're very respectful. Very respectful because I've worked that in as part of my plans. All right. So next steps. I have an assignment for you. You're going to get a spreadsheet. And you're going to put in the spreadsheet what you currently offer your clients. Whether you're paying them or you're not paying them. I mean, charging them or not charging them. Whether they're paying you or not paying you. Whatever it is that you're doing every month to these sites. And you want to put that in it and you want to package it up. Find a small package, a medium package, and a large package. Really try to aim for that medium package as your sweet spot. That's what you want people to sign up for. Put in some value there. Whatever you think that's not going to cost you a ton of time, that you can do for a whole bunch of clients, that you can kind of pad that with some value. You can take a look at my plans on my website. Uh, you can kind of Google around for website care plans and see a couple packages out there to get some ideas. So then put at the bottom that what you think people will pay. So you've got your spreadsheet, you've got your services, you've got your value adds, and then at the bottom you have what people, you think people will pay. Sit back, smile at that, and now raise those prices 30%. <laughs> That's your assignment. <laughs> All right, so it's really important to your clients that you're still in business in six months. It's really important to your clients that you're still in business in a year. You have to run a business. The best way to run a business 
is having this care plans and predictable income. So you're still in business when they need to grow their website, when they need to come back to you, and you're not off working for some other company. So this is what you need to make this happen, and that's the mindset you need to adopt. All right, so I put these slides up at my website, krnd.co slash WC Boston. And you can go there. I've also put some additional reading resources. I put the links on my site for the tools that I talked about. They're not affiliate links. There is a link to a page of affiliate links, but those links are not. And then underneath that, some blog posts on the WP Elevation blog for further reading about, you know, making you make this happen. We do have some time for Q&A, don't we? Yeah, All right, five, perfect. Minutes. Uh, in the back there. Um, you brought up a, uh, initially a long list of um, parts of your plan. Was that for the basic plan or the middle one? Can I do that one? The one with the three columns? No, the one that was just like, it looked like a... Okay, yeah, great. You can go back to that. Sorry. So she's asking me about the slide with this one here. This one? Yes, yes. This is actually Manage WP, and this is actually the side, con uh, side of their console there. When you're in a website, you can click each tab and be able to go to each section to update the plugins or to run a security okay. scan or run a performance scan. I thought this was a good way to snapshot it so that you could see everything that's kind of bundled in. You know, Manage WP did a lot of work with their revamp of trying to make sure they got everything people needed. Um, and that's, I, I thought that was a good snapshot to show that. Thank you. Cool. Yes? So, I use Managed WP and I've been charging my clients to, to update the themes of uh, WordPress and plugins for $5 a month. Mm -hmm. This talk was for you! Yes. <laughs> so, that's why I convert them. Yes. I can have a bit more value to that. Those are right. Uh, you can, they don't know you were using a software. Um, so you can reach back out to them and you can say, I've gotten some tools now to help me better update your website. There's some overhead. Um, you can say, I'm going to start offering some better value packages to my backers. And now this is just what it costs. Okay. Yes? Uh, sorry about wrong. <laughs> okay. But, uh, my question is, what is the actual overhead you have over uh, the plans that you offer? Yes, yeah, so the actual overhead, she's asking the actual overhead of how much it actually costs me to do the updates of the websites. And this is kind of being recorded. I hope none of my clients find this. <laughs> I update clients uh, one time a month. And we have, I have a virtual assistant and a developer. And they go into Manage WP and it takes them one day to update um, half of my clients on the 15th and then the other half on the 30th. So it's usually about in uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes a site. <coughs> for them to go through and do the quality checks that I have. So it's not just clicking buttons. I actually have a process for QA, then I want to make sure it's done right. So that whole process is about 20 to 30 minutes. So that's about the time cost it takes for each site a month. And then they send in support tickets. And my plans say 30 minutes, 60 minutes, or 120. So typically, if they just have 30 minutes, if they request more time than that, you know, it's not going to get done in the month. Um, so it's actually not too much of spent on the site, and the software makes that really easy to do that. And again, because I have a team, it's it's not my time anymore necessarily on top of that. Does that answer the question? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's like, if I come super honest, then it goes out to the, like WordPress.gp forever. So I'm going to keep it ambiguous. Okay. Peggy. Question. So a lot of these tools have different models. What's um, what's free with Manage WP is updating the site. That's completely free. You can have as many sites on there and update it for free, and be totally fine. The uptime monitoring I think is like a dollar a site. Um, so you can choose that tool or another tool for that. Um, basically, what rolls out in their basic package is pretty decent. You could charge a good fee for just what you get for free. Yes. Of course. Exactly, okay. exactly. And it's always really nice to take that lower model and really take out the things that may not cost you money and it may not cost you a lot of time, but put that in the middle plan because it will transition people to that middle plan. Yeah. Yes? So, for instance, you mentioned, I mean, you design the website for your clients, but I mean, we don't definitely do the things that we're not good at, like hot costing. So, how do you do that? Like, how uh, do you transfer that responsibility to the client? Like updating the cost, costing, I gave you the main thing. Uh, most of the, most of our, some of the clients won't be interested in talking to one support. So how do you convince them? Like, are you 
off and they're like, oh, you have to pay your apostate. Or you're going to do it when you're the main name. Uh, great question. So he asked basically how do you take care of the other stuff you don't? So when they have to pay their hosting or their domain names or things like that. Um, I really try to get my clients on an approved hosting. So I, I make a recommendation for them and get them set up on an approved hosting. Um, and because we have uptime monitoring, uh, we're usually able to see if they don't pay their hosting. And it's only happened a couple of handfuls of times. It's not too much to find out the date and to have some sort of reminder for my team, um, if that's the case. But it's not our responsibility. We basically, we, we, we leave that in their court. Um, I think it just saves a lot. I do reach out to the hosting. We do reach out to the hosting and communicate for support on their behalf. That is part of what we offer. Um, so as far as like renewal dates for domain and hosting, I do leave that in their court. And because we have backups, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I was at like dinner at the Cheesecake Factory with my husband and a client, you know, emails me and says, um, our site's down. She did not renew, but it wasn't her that didn't renew the domain. It was uh, a company. It, it, it was a very complicated, <laughs> very complicated relationship. The company did not renew the domain. And the site went down. Um, she never thought that that was my responsibility. She never thought it. So she, she was overjoyed when I told her it was the domain name. She needed to call Network Solutions and get that settled. And the ball was in her court. And she was so happy that that uh, I figured that out for her. I mean, so if that helps. Yes? Do you have any issues with um, corporate clients not willing to pay for a credit card? Great question. Yeah, great question. Most of the time, most of the time I've gotten them to do the credit card. <laughs> I know, I'm terrible. I just know a credit card's better because if you do, if you say and you can pay six months and then in six months you'll pay them, at the end of six months they might have a moment of, of, of purchasing decision. Do we really need this? When it's an ongoing payment, it happens much less. So yes, you can have them pay six months in bulk or a year in bulk. I would not discount it though. Do not discount it because they're paying more upfront. Just because they don't have a credit card, they don't get a discount. All right, yes? Does the, uh, your support plan include any requests for uh, design changes or site changes like that? Okay, yes, question. If the plan at all includes design changes or site changes, um, so basically because I have a developer who's very comfortable with CSS, that was kind of one of the things I really wanted from him. There's a level of the things that we do, which design changes is fine in terms of changing the font color or color like that. They're limited by time. So if it goes over that, we recognize that as a project. We recognize that as a quote. And we'll reach back and say this kind of goes over the support time. We'll you know, whip you up a quote to do that. And actually, let's go through and dig through anything else that you're looking to do to your site. Because chances are, if they're requesting something like that, it's something bigger. They're just not letting you in on it. So we usually transition that onto a quote and not try to knock it out under support. Adding on new plugins and new functionality, that's not covered. That's, you know, because we have to test it on all browsers and all devices. It's not like a 30 minute, one hour thing. Oh, but it's an easy plugin. You just, no, it, it has to take some thought set up. Yes? Um, sometimes updating can get a bit more complex. Um, oh, sorry, I can't hear you. Do you want to? Oh, sorry, I'll try okay. to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so sometimes updating gets a bit more complex and can potentially break your site. What, how do you handle those situations with clients and communication? Perfect. And do you, are they aware of when updates are happening? And uh, is there such thing as content freezes so that you can roll back to something that's a reason for your site? Or how do you handle Great. that? Great, perfect. Great question. So she asked, what happens when you actually do break the client's site, or how do you prevent against that? And do they know that something is happening? <laughs> So the question, is, the answer is, we do send them an email two days before that we are performing maintenance on their site in two days. So if they do have some big email marketing push, if they're going to have a spike in traffic, we're hoping that they email us back and they're like, oh, I've got this whole campaign running right now. And so we don't kind of mess with it. Uh, typically, if we can, for a lot of our complex sites, um, we, well, we always have a backup before we go. So we back up the site right before we update. We update, and if there's an issue, they're usually able to see if it was a particular plugin, and they can either restore the plugin files or restore the backup. Most of the time, it's restore the backup, and then we go off into a staging server, and we'll run it there, and we'll figure out what the problem is. And because it's so far and few between, it doesn't really slow us down, but most of the time, it's a smooth thing. 
Uh, we don't update WooCommerce uh, with all this. So a lot of the big ones, that doesn't happen. We set a time, we coordinate it with the client, it happens on staging, and it's a whole yeah. thing. So, yes? Because how do you, <coughs> me, how do you deal with uh, taking on, when you take on a new client with a website that's in bad shape? Do you have some kind of pre-process in place before you put them on a plan? Yes, I do. So his question is, what happens when a client comes to you and their website's in a bad place and you didn't build it? There is a process for that. It's called a website evaluation. So people come to me and they say, hey, uh, you're a website developer. I just want an email form on my website. You didn't make my website. I want an email form or I want this plugin or can you fix this? We have like crazy pages and our developer was MIA. I say, that's great. I'm so excited. I'm glad to help you. Uh, you're, I just need to know what the bones of the website look like. And I work on a relationship base. So we go through a website evaluation and we move on to my care plans. And when we're on that care plan, we can take care of a lot of these things. We can do the website evaluation, see what the website looks like for X amount of dollars. And then I'll write you a quote for any additional time you might need. But the whole premise is that you're moving on to a website Care. Now, I do have a little caveat there, and I do say at the end of the website evaluation, we can decide if we want to work together, because I don't know what the website looks like. <laughs> and I might say, you know, here is the report of what your website, how it's built, the issues, a couple things you could fix, and you might not, you know, we might not be the right fit for you. So there's a little <laughs> bit there. Yes, Troy. Uh, how do you do with FOMO? Like, how do you do with the fear of missing out on clients that aren't interested? Because I enjoy all my other clients so much. I have no FOMO, fear of missing out. You know, it's really nice because I have a substantial list of clients that all my work comes from. So if I never received a project inquiry in a month, I'm not freaking out. I have 40 websites that I can go to at any point in time and suggest work for and go back into that list because I'm in front of them every single month. So they know me and their their businesses. They're growing. They're doing stuff. They're just you know not asking stuff of me. So I can be proactive and do that. So hey, they gotta get with me. They're missing out. So, yes. So so you don't dictate who someone posts their WordPress site with, um, but if they're insured, they're provided. What uh, criteria do you use to? Uh, select a preferred provider for them. So kind of quiet, do you mean what criteria do I use to help select like a web host for them? Um, so yeah. you, you don't you don't dictate the company someone hosts with, but you have a, a list of preferred suppliers that you can recommend to them. And if so what criteria do you use? To, to find your web host? Yeah. Criteria I use to find a web host? Okay. It's really important that you're on a web post that's dedicated to WordPress and that has malware scanning and removal. Because I do not want to deal with malware scanning and removal. Somebody else needs to deal with malware scanning and removal. So if they're paying for that web post and they're in a good place, that's my number one requirement. All right, guys, thank you so much.